Hi guys, this is MP Clark and I'm back with another cup or actually another uh, piece of the first cup that we went over. So this is part five and I'm going to call part five guys self-care. Um, I want to talk about self-care and as it relates to navigating the nursing home because I think that society has this uh, view of what the nursing home was 20 years ago where it was just like a, a, a place for, <laughs> for little old people that you know there was no problems because if they got sick they just went to the nursing or to the emergency room and into the hospital and this was a retirement home but we know now that the nursing home is more is really a rehab center and in some uh instances can be more like a LTAC right so and urgent care um, because you're dealing with so many things and then you still have that big case, uh, patient load. So if there's like you, if you're a nurse and you've got 25 to 30 patients and you've got a little bit of everything under the sun, we can go with dementia, uh, schizophrenia, we can go with diabetes, we can go with a person that's on uh, dialysis. Um, we can, I mean, you can, you have pretty much everything in, under that med surge umbrella, right? So when you are dealing with people's lives and, and we, let's just face it, nurses, we've just come out of COVID. You've saved the world again. Yes, you have. Pat on the back, nurses. We love you. And not just the nurses. We get it. Everybody else. But I'm talking directly to nurses right now. You need some self-care. The wear and tear on your body. These long hours, especially in nursing homes, pushing those 100-pound medication carts around running from one end to the other. You're dealing with, uh, you know, not, on, not only the medical aspect, but also you're generally the psychiatric nurse. Um, and there's not a lot of education and training in the psychiatric um, area or dementia, right? So now not only do you have to be an expert in clinical, but you've got to cover all of these and nutrition and skin care, right? You know, then there's the census, um, so there's a lot of pressure from that. There's all the charting that you have to do. Um, and so a lot of times you get, we're taking these things home, right? And, you know, I'm not going to say that you don't have a supportive partner, but sometimes if they don't work in healthcare, they don't understand what you've gone through, through the, throughout the day. Uh, and no matter what shift you work. Um, so there is going to be an aspect of this where we have to do self-care, where we unplug. We don't talk about, like uh, a lot of my friends, I don't watch uh, shows on, on health care. And it's not that I never watch them, but on a day-to-day -day basis, I don't watch it because I'm living it all day. And even though most of them are not realistic, it's that thought process. And then I, my mind, uh, we think differently, right? You know, we're always critical thinking. So it, sometimes it's hard to unplug, and that's why it is so imperative to do self-care. Uh, taking a bubble bath, a, a little walk, even during your shift, guys, you can do self-care. Uh, when you, you know, it's one thing we always say about having a nurse bladder, but we need to get away from that because it's a true thing, and it creates problems for us when we're older. And I want to point this out, as a profession that does not have great 401k or great health care benefits, generally um, speaking, uh, and, and even though uh, the, the salaries are improving uh, a little bit, uh, when you don't have great health care or 401k benefits, you cannot afford the wear and tear that this profession causes on your body. And you know, you're going to have people that say, well, you chose it. Well, yes, we did choose it. So we can save you. That's why we chose it. So just so we're clear. Um, however, in choosing this profession, that doesn't mean that uh, I should have any less better health care than what I'm providing or what you are uh, obtaining. Right. So in self-care. You guys, make sure you're going to get checkups. Make sure you're going to the bathroom. Make sure you're packing snacks that you can eat quickly when you duck into that medication room. Make sure you're getting sleep. Make sure you're taking your vacation days. Um, make sure that even in acquiring a new job that you're asking for, uh, you know, I, I never took a job initially where I didn't get at least two weeks vacation a year. Um, and I meant two weeks, not two, five, ten weeks, two, seven day weeks. And then as I moved up the ladder, I didn't take a job where I was going to get any less than four weeks a year. So I think I ended up with five weeks a year or whatever. And that was just starting a new position and maybe mental health days or personal days. Those are real things these days. Right. 
So taking care of our mental health, guys, uh, is going to be better for not only for us, our friends, our family, and our loved ones, but also for our patients. Because what happens when your mental health, or maybe you're in a bad mood, that gets passed on to the patient. It shows in our work. And sometimes it's not because you woke up that day in a bad mood. It's because you are in a perpetual state of being fatigued. Those 12-hour shifts that you're working, 10 hours, 12 hours, heck, even the 8-hour shifts, right? And especially with these contracts, that if you look at the contract, they're requiring you to work six days, you know, at 12 hours, right? So a lot of people ask me why I didn't do any of those. I could have used the money. Who couldn't? I'm not rich, but I didn't want the wear and tear on my body. You know, I'm getting for myself. I'm getting older. I'm going to be 46 in a four in a few weeks, guys. What? Four weeks, five weeks, whatever. Um, so, you know, but having to do that, that, uh, you know, self-care for myself. So I chose my health um, and making sure I got proper, uh, you know, nutrition and things like that. Um, if it's a day that I'm supposed to go out, but my spirit just isn't right that day. Hey, I, I revamp my schedule and I go out another day um, because it does the patients no good for me to be there in that in that area when uh, and in their space because health I believe comes from within and if I'm carrying around inner negativity that that's going to show in my work and it's going to be put off on the patients which is ultimately why I'm here right so we also need to in doing self-care you know uh, nutrition uh, sleep hygiene uh, I am a person I go to bed early because I'm up early in the morning so one thing, uh, you know, I do, I make sure most of my friends and family, they don't call me late. And if you're going to call me late, you have to know either that A, I'm up or B, it's got to be something important. Don't call me to tell me a, a funny story about your dog because I don't care. I need my sleep. I need to get the rest. You know, it's, it's hard when you get those calls in the middle of the night. Like myself, I take my own calls. So in the middle of the night, when I get that call and I've been woken up, and it's, um, you know, my brain has to turn on because I'm generally, if you're calling me in the middle of the night, it is life or death. So I've got to turn my brain on because A, the person on the other side of that phone is recording everything that I'm saying. Maybe not literally recording, but they're writing exactly what I'm telling them. So in order to protect my license and my livelihood, my brain has to turn on. Well, for me, it's hard to turn it back off once it's on. Everything's firing. All these ideas are coming. And did I do this yesterday? Well, tomorrow I got to do that. Next Thursday, I need to do this. So again, self-care. When you're off work, be off work, right? So um, when you are in these salaried positions, that was one thing that I realized towards the end of my long-term care career is that a lot of times the salaried positions, if you did the math, you work, you're making less than what a lot of the lower paid uh, people are making because of all the hours that you're putting in. I think one of the jobs that I had, I realized that I was making what some of the housekeepers were saying they were making. And I had a bachelor's degree at that time, but um, because I was on salary. Uh, so, you know, just making sure that it make it make sense. I want the money to, to make sense to what I'm, the work that I'm putting in and the commitment that I have to this company. And so I'm going to end this video on this note. Um, and this is something uh, I want to give a shout out to my friend, Susan Wiley. I love you. Um, she's passed on, but one of the last conversations that I had with Susan was about doing self-care. And I said to her, you and I will be dead and these companies will be advertising our jobs by the end of the day. Uh, so the loyalty to them, uh, we have to give ourselves that loyalty and give self-care. And Susan passed away within the next day after that. Um, and, you know, it was ultimately self-care. You know, not wanting to call into the job because you're made to feel a certain kind of way. They put you in this mindset in these facilities. And, and some of it is under your own integrity, making sure that, you know, hey, I don't stop until the job is done. And that's all fine and good. But remember, when you are off, you are off. Off work, off duty, off shift, whatever you want to call it. So guys, again, uh, this is 
I think we're going to end this series here and then I'll start on some uh, other things. Please subscribe to the channel. This is the Morning Coffee with MP Clark. Thank you.